Whether you're a tester, developer, or product owner, you know the importance of testing your code to ensure it's good quality when building a product. When Kubernetes comes into the mix, the need for thorough testing becomes even more crucial, but a lot of challenges and issues follow suit. Now, as more companies and organizations shift to using Kubernetes, it's more important than ever to find solutions that help you adopt it, that make the transition smooth. When it comes to testing, that's where TestCube comes in. Hi everyone, welcome to TestCube's YouTube channel. If you're new here, TestCube is a Kubernetes native testing framework that acts as an executor so that you can run, orchestrate, and display your tests and test results in one single place in a Kubernetes environment. In this tutorial, I'll show you how easy and quick it can be to get started and set up TestCube, no matter where you're at in your Kubernetes journey. Let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna go to testcube.io. This is assuming that you already have a cluster up and running. If you don't, but you wanna give testcube a try, I really recommend the combination of Minikube and Docker, but that's for another video. For now, let's assume that you already have your cluster and on testcube.io, you're gonna click on get testcube and you will find the command that you need according to your operating system. In my case, I'm using Mac, so let's go ahead and install it. Okay, so now I've navigated to my terminal and I'm going to install uh, testcube. And that's it, but now to put it inside our cluster, we first have to make sure that we're actually have a cluster that's up and running, right? I set up one locally with Minikube. So we're gonna check its, stat its status. And yep, it's running. So now what we have to do is initialize testcube in our cluster. And to do this, you will type in testcube in it. And this will install all the server components that we need. And that is pretty much it. You can access, uh, test cube commands. Also, they're all available in our docs. But as you can see, what we want right now is to launch our dashboard so we can start testing. To get started super fast and visually, we're going to launch our dashboard, which is just the dashboard command. And that should open it. Okay, so as you can see, that command immediately launched our dashboard in our browser and you can access our documentation from straight up from here to learn how to create your own tests. We're going to keep it very simple and we're going to navigate back to testcube.io to check all the integrations that we currently support. Testcube already comes with support out of the box for different testing tools. Um, as you can see over here, we have Cypress support, K6, Postman, and it's very easy as well to add a custom one if there's one that is not in this list right now. For the purpose of this tutorial, however, I'm going to show you how it's just very simple to set up a test. So we're going to simply run a curl or CURL test. As you may already know, curl or CURL is a command line tool that is used for transferring data with URLs. It is very commonly used to transfer files from and to web servers. So to keep things very, very simple, we're just going to write a quick test that checks that when we visit a website, we get a 200 in response, which means that the website is okay. Okay, so I've opened VS Code and I've created a folder on my desktop just called test. We're gonna create a quick file over here called curl test.json. And in here, we're gonna put the info that we need to check if our website is okay. The website we're going to see URL is going to be testcube.io. Now that we have it, we'll just go ahead and save it. We know the location. So now let's go back to our testcube dashboard and import this as our test source. Okay, so we're back in our dashboard. We have created our JSON file to run our curl test. Now, as you can see, it's very simple to just add a new test. We'll try and do that. Um, let's name it my first test. You can add labels so that later on you can group your tests and run them at the same time, but we're, we're not going to do that right now. Um, for type, we're going to select curl test. And as our test source, we're going to choose the file that we just created. That means that we're just going to use a local file. We're going to browse and we're going to find it here in our folder called test. 
going to check that everything is all right. Okay. And now we create our test. Now our test is officially created and it immediately takes you to the view of it. If you go back to the dashboard, you can see that our test is here now. Now let's try and run it. Oh, I accidentally clicked on it twice. If you click on it, you can watch the logs real time. Let's talk about everything that's going on. Okay. On the top, we can see all of the results for a test through time. So you can see you can sort by different time frames. You get your pass fall ratio. You get your average and execution duration. You get the number of failed executions and your total number of executions. And over here, as you can see, you can check all of your executions and all of their logs. So you can see we immediately got our 200 status code. So that means that everything is working fine on testscape.io. So that is pretty much it when it comes to setting up and creating your first test. It took us what, five minutes? I don't know, but it was so fast. And this is just about 10% of the entire functionality that TestCube brings to the table. Once you're here in the dashboard, you can see that you can create test suites to group your tests. Like I said before, you can use labels, you can go to your test settings and customize it even after you've created it, adding variables and secrets, adding timeouts, checking the definition of your test and the command so you can run it from your terminal as well. If you want examples on how to run other types of tests, I really recommend checking our documentation. We have so much information and so many tutorials written on how to use each and every one of them. Even if there's one that you really need or you really want to try, but we don't have it, don't hesitate to reach out or create it yourself. Remember that we're open source and we're very happy to take in your contributions or just hear from you so we can make TestQ better. So that's it for this video on getting started with testing in Kubernetes using TestQ. Go check us out on GitHub, reach out to us on social media or join our Discord. We can't wait to hear from you and we'll see you on the next one. Bye. Thank you.